Hi, everyone, and welcome to the show where we share the stories of the many who intersect with our healthcare system, but are rarely heard from. I'm Kevin Poe, founder and editor of Kevin MD. So today I have an internal medicine physician, Dr. Mahesh Mulani. He is a Kevin MD contributor and he's the author of the book, let me get this right, Tough Decisions in Care of Elderly Loved Ones, A Guide for Caregivers. So tell me a little bit about your story and what led you to write the book. Okay. Yeah, so I've been an internal medicine doctor for quite a few years now, 20 plus. Uh, and uh, I, five or six years ago, I restarted to see patients in nursing homes. And uh, what I noticed is that uh, a lot of families have real big trouble when they are discussing their parents' issues or their, or their spouse's issue, like somebody t- uh, has depression, they can't figure out. Uh, it is depression. They think it is dementia because he's getting forgetful. Mm-hmm. Patient, elderly people get anxious. They develop so many other health issues like uh, cancers, heart failures. So the family members, especially end of life, they were having. They they do have so many problems. So I come up uh, with the idea. Why don't I address it by writing a small book and. Uh, where I address all the mental, physical, and health issues of the families, you know, of, of the patients. So that's how the idea came about. Well, I think it's a tremendously important topic. Uh, I'm approaching my late 40s, and my parents are in their 70s, and these are conversations that people at my age group are coming up with right now. So... From your experience in your practice, what would you say are the top few issues that family members are dealing with when caring for their elderly loved ones? Uh, Whatever it is, basically every family member I talk to, not every, but most, they'll say, oh, mom doesn't listen, you know? Mm -hmm. I think that is the mom or dad or whoever, or my husband, we're married for 50 years. He never listened. He doesn't listen still. So, you know, we we do not know how to empathize with our loved ones. I mean, this is how they are. And especially when they have some heart failure going on or some cancer, it is very difficult for them to start listening all of a sudden. You know, they are dealing with their own problem. And here we are telling them, giving them solution instead of putting ourselves um, uh, in their shoes. So that is what I have noticed a lot of. Uh, uh, family members uh, do not understand the illness of their loved one. You know, they they want to give solutions right away, mm-hmm. and I do not think that, that is the right uh, thing. I think the best thing is to put ourselves in our loved one's uh, shoes. You know what they are going through, okay, and uh, try to understand and so so i see that a lot especially depression and loneliness is growing day by day especially in the arena of social media mm-hmm. elderly people you know those who have social uh, social media connection they are on social media you know i see them a lot a lot of my patients are connected with me on facebook mm-hmm. but those who do not they are very lonely they if you go to some church service or something, you're fine. But otherwise, a very lo- loneliness is a big problem. Depression is a huge issue. That's what I see. And I could only imagine that loneliness and depression being worsened during the pandemic because um, of social distancing and and the isolation and keeping younger loved ones apart from from from. Uh, from their grandparents. And I could only imagine how difficult it must be during this time. So yeah. if you're a family member and you're caring for your older uh, loved ones, what are some techniques? So you mentioned earlier about thinking it from their point of view. Um, I think on the excerpt on my site, you talked about the empathy. Um, do you have any techniques um, that you can share? Um, any advice that you could give to uh, caregivers about how they can themselves in the shoes of their older loved ones yeah so 
the main thing is the listening you know the more we listen the better it will be so like for example you see your mom is struggling and she lives on her own so instead of going and changing everything in her home just uh, go and sit with her and offer help is there anything i can do for you you know and or just to spend time with her as much as possible and you know so, so many like i i know so many elderly people they are so independent they don't want help uh, even when they get sick even when they are phys- physically incapable they don't want to be burden on their kids they don't even want to be burden on their spouses mm-hmm. you know so they want to buy things themselves so i think the at that time the best advice i would give is just to go and spend as much time as possible and you know get their confidence uh, uh, like okay i think my son or my daughter can help me now let me tell her to get some groceries for me or let me tell her to take me to church or let me you know of things you keep on getting worse because there are people who need help in uh, cooking food you know so they cannot cook food there are so many elderly people who are going hungry in this country which is a, not a very good, good thing but they don't want to seek help and uh, children or there is uh, other loved ones do not know how to help them they are not asking for so uh, spending time we will understand their problems mm-hmm. and uh, the more time we spend they will get our confidence also and uh, this is how i think this should be done in a very simple easy way uh, not not for it should not be forced mom let me help you let me mm-hmm. take you to church let me take you shopping okay mom i am free from 3 to 5 today so i'll be with you you know and we'll spend time together and in that time if mom needs some help you know you see what is going on i spend as much time as possible and uh, then things will open up and then mom will tell you what to do and what not to do and things like that all right so you're an internal medicine physician just like i am and we're obviously going through this uh difficult time during the pandemic how has this changed your practice and what have you seen especially uh uh with the elderly in your community oh so uh, i'm doing mostly telemedicine i would say not mostly more 99% of it except i went uh, to give a knee shot to, to one of my patient you know otherwise everything is telemedicine yep. and uh, the most interesting thing which i noticed that many elderly people even though they have uh, smartphones they do not know how to connect hmm. they only know how to call or do facebook you know because they, but there are so many who do not have a smartphone and those who have a smartphone they don't know how to connect with the doctors mm-hmm. we can send them the link they don't know what to do with the link you know and uh, if i send them uh, if i call them uh, they don't know oh dr mulani i think i have a face time what type of face time you have iphone no so after a couple of questions you know they they, they you come to know okay they don't even have a smartphone they have a flip phone so the many elderly people are struggling because of that and they want to go to doctor's office although they are scared also so this has changed a lot the dynamics have changed a lot for elderly folks and i have noticed that many of them i would say in my practice 30% of the elderly folks have trouble access uh, to the excess of uh, health care setting you know like tele medicine even tele medicine they have problem so i just end up calling them and just talk on the phone and um, no video or anything so they are i don't think i am pretty satisfied with that i don't mm-hmm. think they get that much satisfaction they are always asking me oh, okay when will we i be coming yeah. to your office again so you know although i was thinking tele medicine can be a solution but tele medicine can only be a solution uh, to, if we can provide the good tools to our patients and internet will be a big issue many elderly people have a limited budget they don't even have internet mm-hmm. so uh, yeah, so telemedicine is no is good for millennials is good for under 50 people 
but not for above 65. And you know what? I'm, I'm seeing the same thing too. And um, you can't imagine how many people just want to come in to the office and have a face-to-face meeting just for a annual well visit, just yeah. for managing their hypertension. And these are things that could be easily be taken care of uh, over a video chat or over the phone. But when I have the opportunity to see patients in a clinic, the elderly really grab that opportunity because they, they do value that face-to-face visit. And even in the middle of the pandemic, uh, there's a good proportion of them who are still willing to come in and, and, and see you face-to-face. And, and, and that to me is, is, is just amazing. Yeah, uh, well, very interesting, which uh, I think I noticed is uh, many, for many elderly people, it is their social time also. Mm-hmm. So they love to talk to the doctor. They, uh, they want to, to be connected to the doc- a doctor. This is the human touch, you know. Yeah. It doesn't come with telemedicine. I mean, I think telemedicine has a role, but that human touch that uh, my patients is still talk to me more. But if it is a completely strange doctor talking to a, a, pa- a patient which they have never seen, I don't think the satisfaction can be as much as great. Mm-hmm. I think the satisfaction, my patient is still get some satisfaction because they know me. If they do not know me, I think they, they like, I think the, you cannot be 100% satisfied with that. You, it is till you sit with somebody across the table and oh my gosh you know i like this guy you share stories and kids things and so many things i mean i discuss with their uh, uh, family life with them you know mm-hmm. many of them are farmers i discuss how many pigs they have how many cows they have and all mm-hmm. that thing you know so they like that personal thing so i think that personal thing can be developed when you're uh, in the same room i think yeah. So just so you can share with the audience, tell me a little bit about your practice and wh- where do you practice? Uh, I practice in Owensboro, Kentucky. It's a small town, 60,000 people. Um, I do primary care and uh, I see patients in nursing homes. I see right now I'm seeing in three nursing homes. So I'm medical director at a couple of nursing homes and assist, not assistant medical director, acting medical director at another one because that medical director is on leave. So mm-hmm. yeah, so that that's why I've become more passionate about this elder care business. Even my son is uh, into this now. All right. He's not even a physician. So in the nursing home specifically, um, how has the pandemic um, increased the isolation and loneliness uh, within the nursing home residents? Oh my gosh. Yeah, that that has uh, affected the, the nursing home population the most. Um, because there are no, no visitor policy now. And because of no visitor policy, this has become tremendously tough uh, on them. And especially those who can think. Uh, though if, if they have real bad severe dementia, those people don't understand what's going on. But those who have, do not have dementia, those who have very good memory, those who can still move around a bit, you know, they are confined to their rooms. They are not going to the dining hall. They are not seeing their relatives. They, some of them have spouses and they are not even seeing their spouses. And uh, I think that that is affecting them a lot. Uh, and uh, with uh, everything opening up, I do not know when we are going to open up the nursing homes. And to me, it is a, it is a big problem for the nursing homes and uh, nursing home residents. So and do you see it any, is affecting uh, them a lot. Sorry. Do you see any solutions uh, on the horizon? So what what do you anticipate is going to happen, say, in the next three three to six months or so, as some states are opening up more so than others? Um, look into your crystal ball, and uh, can you give a prediction in terms of what's going to happen um, to these nursing home residents in the next three to six months? So I think uh, everybody will come with some creative ideas how to meet their relatives. You know. Like uh, they can go out in the parking lot or there is a meeting place outside. They can go outside and meet their relatives six to 10 feet away. Mm-hmm. I think that that can happen and now it should start happening. So uh, they should not be touching or kissing or some hugging, you know, things like that. But uh, I think that we can start very soon. 
Uh, we don't even need a crystal ball for that. At least uh, this way, the residents will have their relatives and friends vis visiting them. They don't have to, uh, we should have a time for that. Look, this family has half an hour, next family has half an hour, things like that. I think that would be the best thing for these residents. Um, till we open up, you know, we do not know when we are going to open up real good. Um, I see it in the flu season a lot, you know, all the nursing homes have four or five hallways. So one hallway has flu, we shut that hallway up, you know. So this is not a new thing for them. But we have never shut down like this for months. Yeah. You know? So this, this, this is going to affect a mental effect on everybody, even the nurses. Uh, but some of them say, Dr. Bulani, it is good. Others are saying, well, our work has not reduced because the families call us on phone now and sure. they call more often. So it's a mixed bag of things. But for the residents, it's not good. Yes. So it's definitely going to be... Uh concerning time um, going forward. I think everyone's doing this for the first time. There is no playbook for, for a pandemic. So uh, mm -hmm. as I tell all my patients, we'll just have to take it one day at a time, obviously. So yeah, just have to take one day at a time. Mm -hmm. So tell me the overall message that you want to share with the Kevin MD audience. So yeah, I would, uh, as far as elderly patients are concerned, I would say more empathy is needed. Uh, and that's what I would say towards the elderly population. And uh, the new buildings, whenever the nursing homes are made, I would say we have to make them really friendly towards the families. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's all, you know. Most of uh, the other people know all the message. <laughs> but that's what uh, my business is elderly people. So uh, I try to stick to that. You know? Although I, 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 I do get into other things and a lot of other things but for now this for this thing yeah that's all i would say well thank you so much for doing what you do uh and thank you thank so you. much for joining the show once again this is dr mahesh mulani he's the author of tough decisions in care of elderly loved ones a guide for caregivers and if people want to find out more about the book or find out more about you how can they reach you uh, they can uh, Access the website, uh, elderlylovedones.com. Um, we are still developing it, but there, are, uh, there is some good information there. And uh, they can connect me on Facebook or LinkedIn. Uh, I try to write something medical daily on LinkedIn. Perfect. Well, again, thank you so much for the time, and thank you for doing what you do. Take care. Thank you very much. Thanks.